how will history remember Nancy Pelosi? Certainly better than she can remember it. You know, there were the two Trump impeachments. I thought that was impressive. She tore up one of his speeches. That was great. And that's it. Nothing else. That is it. That's all she has to show for her years in the Democratic leadership. She might think she has other things to show, but that is it. Two Trump impeachments and one torn speech. What did Nancy Pelosi accomplish? Did she build housing for the unhoused? Homelessness has gotten worse on her, you know, I was going to say her watch, but she never cared to look. She's a landlord. Health care is worse. Unions weaker. Don't tell me unions are stronger. Starbucks and Amazon still haven't recognized those unions. Nancy Pelosi today could cancel federal contracts with Amazon and Starbucks and say, unless you sign with the unions, the federal government is not doing business with you. But she won't do that because her husband owns stock in those companies and so do her children. Corporations got stronger and the people got weaker, partly because of Pelosi. Instead of gun control, guns control our streets, and Medicare for All never got voted on, while Medicare is getting privatized. The war in Afghanistan went on for 20 years. She controlled the purse strings with one war authorization after another. The planet got hotter. The oil companies got richer. Not a single windfall profit tax for Exxon. The minimum wage is still $7.25. Hasn't been bumped since 2009, which means it's been eliminated. $7.25 an hour means there's no minimum wage. It was eliminated while she was speaker. The Trump tax cuts from... For the wealthy, still haven't been repealed, but, but, but she's a role model. Yes, a role model. Nancy Pelosi taught a generation of young girls that if you put your mind to it, you too can do the impossible, like serve in Washington for 30 years on just a government salary and still end up with a $200 million fortune. Yes, we can. Well, you, you must respect Pelosi. She's a survivor. So is Joseph Stalin. You know who's not surviving? You know who's not a survivor? People who voted for Nancy Pelosi thinking she'd deliver on health care, an affordable, or better yet, free college, and a decent wage for a decent day's work. But look at her. She's 80 and still going strong. Yeah, she's going strong. Nobody else is. But Nancy's chugging along with those $50,000 Harry Winston brooches on her Vera Wang for the Sunday morning talk shows. Way to speak up for the disenfranchised. She and her husband are worth $100, $200 million. She does not speak for us. She is a fundraiser. That's all she ever was. She's a role model for nobody other than every Mill Valley, California, multimillionaire doyen without a care in the world. Oh, but you say Pelosi gave us Obamacare. Let's talk about, let's talk about Obamacare, shall we? Obamacare, giving me Obamacare. That's like the surgeon telling me, I fitted grandpa with the new hip, but he died on the operating table. I know it's not what you hope for, but you'll be able to bury him with a brand new hip. That's what Obamacare is, and that's all it is. Obamacare, that's what she claims she has to show. In her speech yesterday, that's what she claims she has to show for her years in public service, Obamacare. Obamacare was the single worst thing ever to happen to American patients, doctors, and nurses, and the best thing ever 
to happen to the health care, the health insurance industry. United Healthcare closed yesterday at $522 a share. When Obamacare was signed into law, United Healthcare was selling at $28 a share. You tell me who Obamacare helped. The number one cause of bankruptcy in America, getting sick. You get sick in America, you either die or you go broke. And if you have Obamacare, you die broke. Obamacare should be called GoFundMe Care. All those GoFundMe pages that we must set up, where do you think that money goes? To the health insurance companies. It wouldn't surprise me if GoFundMe was owned by United Healthcare since they're the largest beneficiary of it. The health insurance companies are subsidized by our government. That's what Obamacare is. It is the government subsidizing the health insurance industry. And because United Healthcare went from $28 a share in 2010, when Obamacare was signed into law, to $522 a share yesterday, that means it must go to $1,000 a share in two years. And how does it get there? Well, it gets there by you and me fighting over Dave Chappelle's Saturday Night Live monologue instead of focusing on what's important, instead of doing what's important. And that would be storming the offices of United Healthcare and taking a massive Taco Bell shit on their CEO's desk. The CEO of United Healthcare is Andrew Witte. Know the name, Andrew Witte, W I T T Y. This is a picture of him without the swastika carved into his forehead. He is a serial killer. Andrew Witte, CEO of United Healthcare, is a serial killer. Nobody has more blood on their hands than Andrew Witte, CEO of United Healthcare. He's a serial killer and he's British. He's not even American. It's like Jack the Ripper never got caught because he moved to America and took over a health insurance company. Americans set up GoFundMe pages to pay the health bills that our tax dollars are supposed to be paying, but the hospitals and the health insurance companies need to show record profits quarter after quarter to please the shareholders so they keep raising prices, they keep raising premium, premiums, and they do that by, de by denying us access to doctors, to treatments, to medicine. That's how they squeeze more profits. Deny, deny, deny. Obamacare made the health insurance companies and the for-profit hospitals more powerful, not less. Obamacare turned out to be a license for the health insurance companies to print money and kill Americans. And instead of deporting Andrew Witte, the CEO of United Healthcare, instead of demanding our government put these health insurance companies out of business, Instead of, oh, I don't know, a national strike where Americans agree to stop paying our health insurance premiums, where we agree to stop paying our health care bills. Instead of solidarity, we fight amongst ourselves and then end up having to build these GoFundMe pages to make sure serial killer Andrew Witte, the CEO of United Healthcare, continues to steal hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for himself from our government. He's just stealing money from us. So that's Nancy Pelosi's crowning achievement? Obamacare? How dare you? How dare you? Yes, yes, more people have health insurance, but how many people use it? If you're young, 
and you have Obamacare, it's like wearing seatbelts in a 73 Chevy Nova. You think you're safe until you need it. But you have no idea how utterly useless seatbelts in a 73 Chevy Nova are until you're rear-ended by Paul Pelosi and you go flying into a telephone pole. And the same applies to Obamacare. It's just a security blanket. Nancy Pelosi, there she was today, Nancy Pelosi, telling Congress that she's most proud of passing Obamacare. Really, you're proud of Obamacare. Madam Speaker, health insurance policies under Obamacare are like handguns. In the past decade, a record number of Americans now have them, are too afraid to use them, because when they do use them, they end up dead. How many people with Obamacare, when they get sick, end up working full-time just to see a doctor, end up working full-time just to get the doctor's operation approved by United Healthcare or the prescription approved. Having health insurance in America is a full-time job. You have to work eight hours a day to get the health insurance companies to give you what they owe you. We work for the health insurance companies, sitting on hold, filling out the same three forms a hundred times, and then they lose it, and then you have to fill it out again. Not just the patients, also the nurses and the doctors. Why do we put up with this? Because Nancy Pelosi tells us it's the best that she can do. No, actually, it's the worst you can do. It's the worst you can do. Obamacare is a failure. This is not progress. We are falling behind while the health insurance companies and the for-profit hospitals, and even worse, the non-profit hospitals are getting richer. How is it possible that nonprofit hospitals have record nonprofits? We were supposed to have a public option. Obama promised us that. Biden promised us a public option. But no, Obamacare made health care more, not less, more beholden to Wall Street. I love the way the Democrats frame Obamacare as a positive step forward. No, Medicare was a positive step forward. Obamacare is 20 steps backwards. You see, a step forward, at least for Democrats, for progressives, a step forward is a step away from the health insurance companies. Away, that's a step forward. Obamacare is a major step backwards because it made the health insurance companies more powerful. If you have a chronic illness like diabetes, heart disease, or cancer, Obamacare makes you dependent on CEOs like Andrew Witte, whose business model for United Healthcare specifically is to wear you down until you die. You get sick. The health insurance companies tell you, slow down, slow down here. Stop and smell the roses. What's your hurry? We'll, we'll take care of it. Everything with you is so rush, rush, rush. I get it. Your lungs are filled with fluid and you have two minutes to live. But that's no, that's no reason to talk to me in that way. I don't appreciate the tone of your gurgle. I find your gurgle menacing. I'm sorry, I know you're frustrated, Mr. Feldman, but I find your death rattle abusive. It's not part of my job description to sit here and have your death rattle speak to me this way. I need you to calm down, take a shallow breath, and wait your turn. That is Obamacare, where the tone of your voice, the way you talk to a doctor or an administrator, is the crime, not the you're talking to a paid serial killer. It's the way you talk to them. That's the issue. Baked into this business model here in America for the health insurance companies is killing you. That's 
how they make their profits by killing you. I was at Walgreens two weeks ago trying to get a prescription filled for my elderly next door neighbor. And, and they're putting me through the paces with the insurance companies and the incompetence. And I finally shouted, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. Let me, I'm sorry. My tone of voice, I apologize. I'm going to go back to Mr. Andriotti's apartment and see if he can die for you. Would that make things easier around here? I want to be a team player. So I'll be back in two hours. Let me talk to Mr. Andriotti and let's see if he'll be kind enough to drop dead for you. I said that. Still couldn't get the prescription filled. Uh, that's the business model. Tie your treatment up, your medicine up, your operation up and paperwork so that by the time you finally see a doctor or get your prescription filled or receive the operation, you're dead. That's Obamacare. That's Nancy's crowning achievement. Thank you so much for Obamacare. See, we don't like to talk about how our healthcare system is a slaughterhouse because we don't want to think about it. We just don't want to talk about it. It's rude. I'm the hater, right? If Nancy Pelosi's idiot kids are saying this right now, they're going to go, haters have to hate. I'm not the hater. I'm not the hater. I'm not responsible for millions upon millions of Americans dying from greed. So we celebrate Nancy Pelosi yesterday. We're celebrating Nancy Pelosi on MSNBC. We're calling Obamacare one of her signature achievements. We're supposed to be grateful for Obamacare. Why? Why? Because it has Obama's name on it and Mitch McConnell was mean to him? Could you imagine if this was Bushacare? And it could have been it could have been Bush care, Bush care. Obamacare is based on Romney care. Mitt Romney invented Obamacare when he was the Republican governor of Massachusetts. Romney care and Obamacare are the same thing. It's a, a Obamacare is a Republican health care plan. And if the Republicans, if a Republican president had introduced it, there wouldn't be a single Democrat willing to sing its praises and there wouldn't be a single Democrat offering an alternative, but they just wouldn't like Bush care. But, you know, it's a branding exercise. Obama slaps his name on a Republican windfall for the health insurance companies, Obamacare, which is essentially a transfer of wealth from our government to the health insurance companies. And because it has Obama's name on it, Nancy Pelosi goes on MSNBC last night to burnish her legacy with it. It's Obamacare. No, but children can stay on their parents' health insurance plan until they're 26. How about no health insurance? How about we get rid of health insurance? How about universal health care like every other industrialized nation? How about that? How about Obamacare is a failure? A baby born today in America has an estimated life expectancy of 76 years. When Obamacare was signed, life expectancy was 79 years. Our life expectancy dropped almost three years since Obamacare was signed into law. That is not a step forward. That is a at least three years in life expectancy backwards. I call that failure. United Healthcare's profits grew bigger and we've gotten shorter. Seriously, since Obamacare was passed, Americans are getting shorter. Defenders of Obamacare say, well, you know, those life expectancy figures, uh, that includes COVID and opiate deaths, so it's unfair. Excuse me. COVID and opiate addictions were caused by Obamacare. So the, 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 the lower life expectancy that happens because of COVID and opiate addiction, that's on Obamacare's watch. It's Obamacare's fault. 
If this country had single payer, or at the very least a public option for health insurance, we could have reined in the hospitals and the drug companies who are both singularly responsible for record COVID and opiate deaths. No other country has had the record number of COVID and opiate deaths because no other country has Obamacare. No other country allows their health care to be run by for-profit serial killers. And that's all because of Obamacare. Obamacare didn't make things a little better. It made things a lot worse. We were told Obamacare was a Trojan horse that would eventually give us Medicare for all. Bullshit. Obamacare is a Trojan horse that has given us all anthrax. Not Medicare for all. It's a Trojan horse that has given us anthrax. So go ahead, Nancy. Run your victory lap holding up Obamacare as your torch.